Uh, thank you, Ali. Thanks for, to the organizer for inviting me to give a talk. Uh, it was on a short notice, so I didn't have much time to prepare, so I apologize if... Uh, okay, so I'll talk uh, well, a bit. I'll start to talk a bit uh, about entropy, some general facts, what I want to study, and then I will uh, go to the case of partial hyperbolic diffeomorphisms. Uh, since I will talk a lot about the entropy, maybe I should give very quickly the definition. Uh, in my setting, M is a compact uh, manifold because I'm mostly in the differential case. The definition works for compact metric space. Uh, and I have a function from M to itself. It's a CR diffel. Works for continuous too. Uh, how do you define the entropy? You define a metric the following way. The distance between two points, uh, it depends on N and on the function actually. It will be the maximum of the distance between Fi of X, Fi of Y. or zero smaller or equal i smaller or equal n. And then with this metric, uh, you uh, try to cover the space with balls, and you look at the minimum number of, the, of balls which you need. And this would, should be, uh, let's say this is A of, it depends on F, N, and then epsilon greater than zero. This is a minimum of the cardinality of the set S, such that S is uh, an epsilon generator, which means that the union of the balls with this metric, uh, center X and radius epsilon, where X is in S, covers the entire space. And then you look at the uh, exponential rate of growth of this. Uh, so let me give the definition. Is a limit when epsilon goes to zero, put lim sup n goes to infinity, one over n log of this number. Okay. This is a topological entropy. There is a metric entropy, which I will talk about the metric entropy too. So I will suppose that I am in the same setting, but now I will, I will suppose that I also have an invariant measure. It's a probability. On M, invariant. For F. Uh, this means that the push forward is uh, the same for F. And then uh, one can define uh, the metric entropy of F with respect to mu. Well, I don't give the, def I won't give the definition. Basically, it's a similar definition. But now you ask that this set S, uh, th these walls cover almost um, uh, all the space with respect to the merit. These are some definitions. There are many other equivalent definitions. Can be done with open sets, with other type of uh, numbers here. In the, for the metric entropy, it can be done also with partitions. And, uh, uh, OK, these are the entropies I will talk about. Uh, they are. Well, well studies in dynamical systems. There are some important, important uh, invariants. This is a topological invariant. This is invariant under uh, uh, measure theoretical conjugacies. Uh, 
uh, they describe somehow the complexity, uh, the level of the complexity of the orbits of the system. Uh, they are also related with other invariants like the the Aponov exponent, uh, volume growth, some dimensions. Uh, so they are well studied and they are very important in dynamical systems. Uh, now, more specifically, what I'll look at, I'll look at uh, this, uh, this as functions of the topological entropy. This, of course, can be seen as a function from some space of the geomorphism R, where a function goes to the entropy of the function. Uh, and the metric entropy also can be seen as a function, but uh, it will be defined on the space of invariant measures for some uh, systems. Now I suppose that uh, M of F is the set of invariant measures For f, and then I look at the function goes from m of f to r. Well, actually, r plus it's always greater or equal than zero. Where a measure goes to uh, metric entropy of f with respect to this measure. This is called also the entropy function, uh, and this is. One can show that it is an affine function. Uh, and uh, well, what I'll look, more specifically, I'll, I'll look at the continuity properties of this. Well, here I have a topology depending on R, right? Depending on the space I take. Here I have, for example, the weak star topology, a set of measures. Uh, now some general things about this, these functions. Uh, let me start with the second one. Uh, metric entropy. H mu of F. As I said, this is in general this is an affine function, but uh, in general is uh, is not continuous, and uh, what usually fails is. Uh, General, not continuous. And uh, in many cases, is not lower semi continuous. And this is generically. Uh, that's because, for example, uh, some invariant measure can be approximated by periodic orbits, measure supported on periodic orbits. The metric entropy on a periodic orbit is zero. And the uh, metric entropy on other measure can be non-zero. So this usually fails. Uh, however, in many cases, and there is a lot of work in uh, smooth ergodic theory, I don't know, uh, when this function is upper semi-continuous. Many cases. upper semi-continuous. And this is useful because uh, this, uh, well, is related to thermodynamical formalism. This will imply that there exist equilibrium states states and uh, in particular measures of maximal entropy which are measures where uh, this metric entropy coincides with the topological entropy. I didn't say, but there is also a variational principle, which says that this topological entropy is this, the supremum of all the metric entropies for all the invariant measures. Uh, OK. And there are many cases where this works. Uh, let's see. What do I want 
going to say first now. Uh, maybe I should say what is uh, the main tool here to prove this thing. Uh, it comes from Bowen, I don't know, it was made better by other people. It's something which is called entropy expansiveness. And well, there are generalizations like asymptotic metropy, metro, entropy expansiveness and uh, other types of generalizations. This basically means that uh, one can uh, look at these balls, but when n goes to infinity, and w what one, sw one wants is that there is no entropy in these balls. And it's dynamical balls, they are called dynamical balls, but there is very small entropy on these on this balls. And this usually implies that uh, this function is absolutely is upper semi-continuous, and this gives uh, equilibrium states and measures of maximal entropy. And, uh, okay. Now some general things about the topological entropy. And again, I'll talk about upper semi-continuity semi and lower semi-continuity separately. For upper semi-continuity, uh, there is one obstruction. One obstruction. Well, actually, there are two, but or two together, let's say. Uh, is a finite regularity, low or finite regularity. Uh, and uh, homoclinic tangency. What is a homoclinic tangency is uh, and there is a hyperbolic point. This will have a stable and an unstable manifold. And uh, these two manifolds are tangent at some point. And here there are uh, some example, explicit example by uh, House. I should mention Tamil Mishurevich. That's when you have this, and you look at the entropy function, uh, well, at the topological entropy function. is not upper semi-continuous. This is for any R. Than, smaller than infinity. This is what I mean by finite regularity. In a space of CR diffeomorphism with R finite, if there is this uh, homoclinic tangency, at this point you won't have uh, upper semi-continuity. And maybe I should say here that at this, well, you can, uh, with this you can construct an example where you don't have uh, the upper semi-continuity semi of the entropy function too. So in general, uh, mu goes to h mu of f is upper semi-continuous. It's, uh, it's equivalent with uh, having the this function uh, f goes to, let me, let me put F0, goes to H of F, upper semi-continuous at F0. So the upper semi-continuity of the uh, metric entropy function 
and the upper semi-continuity of the topological entropy are very related. And the same, uh, the same tool, for example, the entropy expansiveness proves the two. Now, as I said, there are these examples where this doesn't happen. And uh, actually, these are the only obstructions because there are two, two theorems. There is a dim. I think he did it for the topological entropy, I guess. Newhouse did it for the metric entropy function. So they proved that in the C infinity topology, uh, they are absolutely continuous. So this, uh, this doesn't happen. Uh, how should I put it? This infinity upper semi-continuous. And if f is c infinity, then mu goes to h mu of f is upper semi-continuous. So in the c infinity topology, everything is fine. Uh, now, also, there is a result which says that far from these homoclinic tangencies, everything is fine too. So, this is a result by Diao, uh, Yana, Yang. And it says that. Uh, Sufficient the C1 topology here. So this means that it's away from homoclinic tangencies. This is a set of homoclinic tangencies, the function says homoclinic tangencies, and the closure of it. The topological entropy is upper semi continuous. And if F is here, Then the metric entropy function is also upper semi-continuous. So this gives a pretty complete dis uh, description, I think, about the upper semi-continuity. Well, of course, there are many other results for some functions with some specific properties. One can get some the, the upper continuity of the metric entropy function too. Uh, about the lower semi-continuity, uh, here there are some results in low dimensions. And uh, the most famous result is probably the result by Katok, which says that if M is a surface, Then uh, if we look at the space of C1 plus alpha, the feomorphism, then on this space the topological entropy function is lower semi-continuous. Maybe it's a uh, can do it in the C1 topology, and you can put the restriction that the, f the function is C1 plus alpha 2. Uh, OK. Well, if the dimension is 1, then of course uh, the entropy is constant 0, so it's uh, obvious. And let me put like an observation. If the dimension greater or equal than 3, then uh, you can look even at the C infinity functions, and this will not be lower semi continuous. Not lower semi continuous. Uh, okay. 
So these are some general facts about the, this uh, entropy views that functions of the, 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 the system or of the measure. Now I want to, to, uh, to look at the case of partially hyperbolic systems. So let me define quickly what's a, what a partially hyperbolic system. Well, I will have uh, diffeomorphisms from flows. Uh, F I will denote it as PhD, partially hyperbolic diffeomorphism. If there, is, if there exists a splitting into three subbundles, the subbundles are invariant. A star can be, okay. and uh, well, three condition. Let's say uh, E F restricted to E S is contracting uniformly. It should be the stable space on the unstable space on E U is expanding uniformly. And in the center uh, is, uh, let, let's, let me just say that it is in between. This means that it can be contracted or expanded, but weaker than what is happening on this other sub <coughs> uh, Okay. Now, why do I look at this system? The reason is that because for these systems, usually, you can say lots of things. Uh, so the first thing, if the center is zero, then uh, F is uni uniformly hyperbolic. And in this case, there are lots of things uh, known. Uh, for example, it is known that they are entropy expensive. So the upper semi-continuity comes immediately. And, uh, well, it's even more. They are structurally stable. They are conjugated to small C1 perturbations, which means that the entropy, the topological entropy is actually locally constant. For this, everything is very fine. Uh, now let's look if the dimension of the center is slightly bigger. equal to one. What is happening in this case? Well, one can still expect some good behavior because, uh, well, in dimension one, the entropy is fine. Uh, and the other directions are uniformly hyperbolic, so everything should be fine. Uh, and here, I just have, it, it is enough for me to say that uh, the partially hyperbolic diffeomorphisms with the central dimension one are away from tangencies. Okay. Uh, I will denote HD one. So these are inside the ones which are away from tangencies. So uh, I can just apply the result by Liao, Vienna, and Yang, and the upper semi-continuity comes for free for the metric entropy function and for the topological entropy. Uh, now, about the lower semi-continuity of the topological entropy, this is uh, a bit more complicated. Uh, so how about 
lower semi-continuity of the topological entropy. Uh, here there is a conjecture. I believe that it's still open. That uh, in this space, the, the topological entropy is, uh, is also lower semi-continuous, which implies that it is continuous. Continuous. On one event. Uh, okay. Now, uh, this is known to be true, but uh, this, uh, this can be proven in a case by case analysis, let's say, by case. Analysis. So it's easy. one can show it for basically all the examples we know. Unfortunately, there is still no uh, a good uh, classification of this, even in dimension three, as far as I know. I think there are uh, lately there are many results in this direction. Also, there are new examples which show up, keep showing up. Uh, let me just say that in, uh, in many examples, actually, this is locally constant. Uh, and I think that the most difficult uh, case was um, perturbations. Of time one. one. Maps. Of, anos of hyperbolic flows. Uh, in this case, it's, it's uh, actually continuous. It's not constant. It's easy to see. And uh, well, there are several results here. I could mention Hua, uh, Wu, and Su. Probably the most general is myself with Yang. For perturbations, yeah, including perturbations. Well, let's say the proof, well, in the proof you have to argue that it's close enough to the hyperbolic flow. And now, for large perturbation, I believe it's true, but it's a... So it is true for small enough perturbations, maybe I should say. This, this is the proof. C1, small enough perturbations of know, hyperbolic flows. So we need it that it's close, C1 close enough in order to preserve some, uh, some of the structures which exist for the flow and use them in the proof. That's locally constant, yeah, that's locally constant. It's, it's hmm? Yeah. Uh, yes, yes. I'm not sure about some last example by, uh, I didn't check if, if, it's, if there is any difficulty. The last example by uh, Bonatti with uh, Gogolev and Potri, yes. But I think probably the same technique would work. Because they have basically perturbations, of some perturbations of the flow. Uh, OK. Uh, well, unfortunately, as I said, there is, there is no, it would be nice to have a proof for uh, the general case. But it's still, uh, there is, as far as I know, there is no such proof. And let me talk a bit about the higher dimension of the center. Greater equal than two, then, uh, well, everything fails. Uh, in general, is 
now upper semi-continuity and now lower semi-continuity. Well, no upper semi-continuity if it's not C infinity. You, know, it's, uh, you can, in the center, you can have a homoclinic tangency. And there is no lower semi-continuity even in the C infinity topology. You, know, you can construct example where it's not lower semi-continuous. So uh, well, one, can, if one wants to prove something, he has to add some extra conditions here. Uh, okay, now how about the flows? Well, what is a partially hyperbolic flow? For me, uh, partially, uh, well, I didn't say what's the entropy for a flow, but Uh, yeah, maybe you can use that. You get, uh, you probably get the upper semi-continuity at the measure of the maximum entropy or close to the measure of the maximum entropy. Uh, but it still depends, wait. If it's low entropy, but it depends if it contributes or not to the total entropy, because it's, uh, if you have a tangency, I don't know, let's, It depends. You have to put some conditions there. Yeah. I, I think that if you put the right conditions, probably you can get the continuity. But it can, for, for example, a, a, a homoclinic tangency product with an ASO doesn't work. And the homoclinic tangency can be a small perturbation of the identity with small energy. Uh, okay, for flows, well, I didn't say, but the, the topological entropy it is defined as the topological entropy of the time one map of the flow, and the magic entropy is the same. Right? Uh, uh, phi one. Well, the invariant measures for phi and for phi one are not exactly the same. One has to be more careful here, but basically one, uh, one defines them like this. Uh, now, for me, a flow is partially hyperbolic. I will denote this uh, partially hyperbolic flow. If, again, I have uh, the invariant splitting, and they are invariant, uh, under the flow, and again, uh, it will be the same, that ES is contracting. Exactly the same definition, EU expanding and EC is in between. Let me just put an observation here. Um, or maybe I should put it in definition. What I mean here, well, I want to restrict, I want to put a restriction here and I'll I'll say that I'll, I'll assume that phi has no fixed points. No singularities. Probably some things can be done for singularities, but it's easier uh, if you assume that there are no singularities. Uh, and let me just make an observation that the center bundle always contains the direction of the flow. So it will be at least one dimension in this case. But the one dimensional case, it's the uniformly hyperbolic flow. Uh, 
phi is uh, uniformly hyperbolic. And in this case, again, uh, everything works fine. Uh, it's entropy expensive, so upper semi-continuity comes. And it's, uh, well, structurally stable, modulus, uh, time change, so the, uh, the entropy is, in fact, continuous. Uh, so this is everything. This is okay. Uh, so, uh, well, the uh, question is what happened? The central dimension is equal to 2. Uh, now, here I should say, like a, like a general observation, is that... Uh, The flows in dimension n are basically are something in between diffeomorphisms in dimension n minus one and dimension n minus two. There are uh, there are some restrictions of diffeomorphisms in dimension n, but some generalizations of diffeomorphisms in dimension uh, n minus one. So this is let's say that it's morally in between the partially hyperbolic diffeomorphism with the center one and the partially hyperbolic diffeomorphism with the center two dimension. So one ex would ex expect that uh, the, the behavior should, uh, some, some results which work for this could be transferred for the flows but possibly not all of them. And this is exactly the case here. Uh, <coughs> on one hand, let me put it like a theorem. This is, uh, well, this is together with, uh, all done. And well, we still have to write it down, but it's not. Uh, it's, uh, the upper semi-continuity works um, partially hyperbolic flows two. This means that the center dimension is two. The topological entropy is upper semi-continuous here in, in the C1 topology. And uh, the, the metric entropy again is upper semi-continuous, upper semi-continuous. And uh, well, uh, the proof is it's not, uh, it's not a immediate generalization of this, of the, the diffeomorphist case, but it's, uh, it's almost. You apply the same, same method, it's, uh, because it is entropy expensive. And it's the entropy expensiveness. Now, how about the lower semi-continuity of the topological entropy. And here is where the difference comes. Uh, theorem one, theorem two. Is that the, the topological entropy is not lower semi-continuous. And not even in the C infinity topology. Uh, 
And uh, well, for this we have an example. And the example, uh, maybe I should give an outline of it. How much time do I have? Okay. okay. Uh, the example is to take a hyperbolic flow, let's say Psi, a hyperbolic, uniformly hyperbolic, on some manifold N, it can be, I don't know, the unit tangent bundle of a surface with negative curvature, suspension flow of an anasol. Uh, then to take M, the product of T1 with N, uh, well, to take a function, uh, the infinity, let's say, non-constant, And to define, define the flow on M, uh, A is Y, A is in T1, Y is in N, uh, you keep the, the horizontal fiber fixed, and then uh, inside the second coordinate you move with the speed alpha of X. Psi alpha of X T. Why? At each point you move on the flow, but with different speeds. At some points you move faster, on other points you move slower. Uh, then the, the topological entropy of this will be uh, the topological entropy of psi. multiplied by uh, the maximum, what is the exponential, maximum of alpha, the exponential of maximum of alpha. And how to make, a, how to perturb it, you, uh, you make the flow move a bit up. Uh, the idea is, uh, let's say that this is generated by X. By some vector field uh, X on N, then phi will be generated by the vector field uh, zero X. So you can make an arbitrary small perturbation, C infinity small, phi epsilon, to be generated by, uh, I don't know, epsilon uh, ddx. And then the, the orbits will move up, and they, uh, well, uh, they will go around the circle. And it's easy to show, show that the entropy of phi epsilon is uh, the entropy of psi multiplied with the integral of alpha or log of the, I think it's log of the integral of e to the alpha. So uh, it, um, it drops immediately and it stays constant actually for every epsilon. Uh, and let me finish with uh, just saying that, okay, it doesn't work, but at least there is still some hope one can, at least in some cases, one can prove something. Uh, but for the, I don't want to, def yeah, no. uh, let me just say that one can define something which is called the volume growth. Uh, maybe I should. Okay, let me stop. I'll stop. See.